today we are at the 2023 UK Hill Climb National Championships, an event defined by incredible lightweight tech. Keep watching to see how we got on with our course recce yesterday, and spoiler alert, it was really, really horrible. Kicking things off today, we're going to take a look at the bike of fellow YouTube superstar, Chris Hall. Chris, hello. how did you get on today? Um, hill climbs is not my forte, but I think I did this last year, this event, and I was, I think, three or four minutes faster. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. And how much of that is down to your beautiful bike? Uh, I think it's probably all down to the bike, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> so it's a, it's the previous generation R5, which is actually lighter than the new generation R5. Everyone thinks it's got paint on it. It's not paint, it's a plastic wrap. It's lighter than paint. All the finishing kit stuff is like silly, expensive, super lightweight, pretty schmolker, stem, handlebar, saddle, a special Doremo seat post because it's a special shape seat post. And then the wheels are reserve wheels, which we build up with some extra light hubs, bird spokes. Now, one thing I've noticed, you've gone one by like many hill climbers, but you're using a mountain bike crank set. What is the gossip with that? So it's lighter than a Dura Ace crank set. And the, the big thing was wanting to run a 34 chain ring. And if you were to say use like a, a wolf tooth chain ring with a Dura Ace crank, is it, it, that comes out heavier. It doesn't really fit very well. The 34, I think the smallest you can get of a wolf tooth is actually a 36 with a Dura Ace crank. So I knew after doing it last year on a 38, that I wanted, yeah, XTR crank set, 34 on the front, 165 cranks, so shorter cranks, which means just like pedaling is much nicer. And also, I think the XTR cranks look really nice. So obviously pairing mountain bike components with road stuff, did you run into any compatibility issues or anything like that? Uh, the main thing was that the, like an XTR crank set, the actual spindle is longer than a road, a road crank set spindle would be. So we've had to like put in a big old spacer to kind of accommodate for that. But in terms of like, when you're riding it, you don't notice it at all, in all honesty. It just looks a bit weird when you look down on it and you see this big spacer kind of making the left hand crank arm stick out a bit more, but works fine. Yeah. It's a pretty tasty looking build. How much does this weigh? <laughs> For a, I'm just going to say disc brake road bike as well. 5.58, I think, is what I weighed it at. That's pretty good. That's pretty that damn way. good. Thank you so much. Taking time out of your busy media schedule post race. That's it's, our... it's been a bit manic, actually. It has been. <laughs> Note to self, don't build up a swanky bike next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's our first incredible hill climb bike out of the way. On to the next, and there's plenty more to come. Hill climbers will be dreaming of getting to eat a pie like this. <laughs> I'm here with Ben Mackinson from Apache Brave Racing, and my goodness, has he got a lightweight Amanda. Ben, very briefly, how awful was that? Oh, it was a struggle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, very, very hard work. Uh, I rode it Friday and Saturday, but yeah, you just can't prepare. Um, feeling it now, but it's all good fun, so that's why we're here. <laughs> now, this is obviously a pretty special looking bike. What is your personal tech highlight from this bike? I think it's got to be the sanded frame, you know. I uh, went into the, the, the lockdown and needed a little project, so I thought, why not buy a £200 eBay Trekham on the frame and sand the paint off? <laughs> Got five hours in and realised I'd made a massive mistake. And yeah, th 30 <laughs> hours later, it was done. So saved me 175 grams, so well worth it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's my highlight. So you're saying you spent £200 on the frame. I mean, like, you know, this is a nice build, yeah. but it's not It's not crazy, crazy. What do you think this owes you as a bike? So, including the wheels, and I bought these the other week for 500 quid, it's £1,500. It's, it's all second-hand, all like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, whatever it is. Absolutely love that. You know, again, we saw this last year. You do not have to spend ludicrous amounts of money to be competitive in a hill climb. It doesn't matter about how you place though. What people want to know... How much does your bike weigh? It's 5.2 kilos. Nice, not bad for the cash. How did it feel on today's climb? Started off really well, um, but then I, I ran into a mechanical relatively early on. When I was putting any power through the 28, it was just skipping. And like, on some of the slopes on this, a 26 just isn't gonna cut it. So I was like, I'm just gonna have to deal with this slip. Um, yeah, not ideal, but I mean, 
I'm here. <laughs> you know, I didn't fall off. <laughs> On your cockpit, I can see, well, there's no expander bung in there or top cap, and yeah. you've gone for the chopped drops. What's the rationale behind that? Weight. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the expander cap, uh, when I was obviously building the bike, I had to take it out anyway. And I remember taking it out and thinking, wow, that's heavy. You know, I know it's not smart. Final point for me, SRAM Red Mechanical. I mean, that is that is the hill climbers group set of choice. Yeah. The rear derailleur saves a lot over, say, Jura Race. And then I use one by as well, so I've stripped the uh, the shifter and taken the selector out of that. But yeah, say when I was reading up on it, SRAM Red was the way to go. So that's, that's, this is where I ended up. And I got it cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Such a cool bike. I definitely say of the bikes on the hill, and Mondas and Cannondale Super 6s are clearly the bikes to go for if you're wanting to build something lightweight. So we're just at the very start of the struggle. We're just like just in the centre of the town. It's quite a steep ramp to kick things off, and while it's currently open to cars, there's a van about to go by tomorrow. It's going to be fully closed, so it's going to be a proper amazing spectacle. How do you think you're going to get on, Felix, trundling up? I mean, trundling up, I'm going to fare much better than you because <laughs> look at the Jack's bike. The fixed gear. It's my winter road bike with normal road bike gearing. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> Honestly, what is Jack like? He's so overgeared. I don't even know if he's going to get to the top without walking, but we'll see. That was as bad as anticipated. Really dreadful. Uh, I'm so glad I'm not racing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get very far. <laughs> Defeated, oh my goodness. I cannot. It's so <laughs> steep. There's no let up. Monstrous, amazing. Just so the viewers can understand what you're going through, what gearing are you running? Uh, 48, 20. Not right about that all the time, but this is just so sustained. I cannot fathom what it's going to be like for people racing tomorrow. Meh. Go on, son. <laughs> all right, we kind of managed to ride the first part of the course, <laughs> most of it. But now we're on to like the second section of three, really, if you want to break it into segments. Basically, a sort of flat, little bit of a downhill and then back into the climb. While lightness is almost always the name of the game in hill climbs, you know, for a course like this, there is a significant downhill section that could be an aero advantage. It's absolutely incredible, beautiful, rugged hill line up there. The pass is pretty much as far away as you can see there. This is a long climb, and I'm gonna say, probably the hardest nationals or even hill climb course I can think of in the UK. That's a bold take. That is a bold one. Let's know if we're wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> This is where you're going to want to get a real speed up for the steep section coming up. You're going to really crank it. <laughs> wow. You know, video never does climbs or descents justice, Jack, so tell us what the stats are. It is 4.3 kilometres long and climbs roughly 380 metres, an average gradient of 8% with maximum gradients of 20%. I cannot believe how hard a climb this is. <laughs> that was the course directly done. Heart rate is about stabilised. <laughs> You've now got a taste of the misery these cyclists are all putting themselves through. And unlike that healthy bunch, we've got a date with Dr. Luigi, who's got a big bowl of pasta on prescription. Let's go! I'm here with Daniel Watkinson from Hutchison Brother UK with a delicious old school classic tarmac. Before we talk about your wonderful bike, how did you get on and how awful was that climb? Uh, worse than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I went out too hard because, you know, you always feel good, don't you? And then you get like five minutes in and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> it was worse than I could have ever expected. <laughs> so there's no change in the climb. It's always going to be unpleasant, <laughs> but you've clearly got the right bike for the job. How did you get on with the bike today? Yeah, it's lack of weight was definitely appreciated. I think I needed more gears, like on the really steep bits. Oh, just can't, just can't. It's so, <laughs> so steep, I need more gears. Um, the wide bars, the triple X bars, were actually really useful. I was a bit worried they'd be too wide, but they really help with leverage, and I just, 
I don't do enough gym on my arms. So <laughs> the, the leverage is really needed. Tire choice, obviously critical for any hill climb, let alone one that's that slippery and greasy. How'd you get on with your Veloflex tires today? Yeah, good. Um, I had a few slips, like when you get out of the saddle and you're trying to put the pedal, the power down, um, it's, it's just so damp on the hill. Um, but mostly quite good grip, like on the descent, I was really trying to push the speed just to make up what I could and they were fine. Um, and again, they're light. It's a hill climb bike, so obviously you've gone one by. How'd you get on with the one by oval ring? Um, I actually really like the oval rings mainly because I've got weak knees so it makes it a bit easier and also you kind of feel like you've got a smaller gear because of it um, I think one by for me is really beneficial like I would have never used a big ring up there <laughs> not even close um, so you might as well save the grams now one final detail I absolutely love what's the story with this little skull what's he what's, what's he doing down there <laughs> So this frame was a birthday present and James sent it off to have the paint stripped and it lacquered to one of his carbon repair friends and they added in the little um, skull <laughs> as like a cute little detail so when it's seen on TV Neil will, will be able to see the skull. <laughs> <laughs> a nice little skull to remind you that you're always going to feel like absolute death at the top of every hill climb. Continuity error, tasty bonus. We've just been told as well that when the bike was stripped back for painting, the rear brake cable was internally routed through the top tube, which makes it the only Tarmac SL3 in the world with internal cable ring. How cool is that? Finally, the key question I forgot to ask, it weighs 5.4 kilograms. I'm here with Jason Holder, who I actually met last night and I've already had a really good look at this bike there's a full gallery of that on bikeradar.com but for now we're going to hear from the man himself Jason how did you get on today hello uh, yeah very good um, you know hill climb you're only going to go one way and that's into the pain cave <laughs> and fully into the pain cave I got some really good photos of Jason praying at the altar of pain so this is a pretty special trek Amanda I mean I don't even know where to start. There's a lot of tech going on here. The thing everyone wants to know, how much weight did you save drilling all those holes? <laughs> uh, in the rear mech, I saved nine grams. Worth it? Um, it depends. <laughs> it's, not, it's not ultimately important. Um, for me, just my tinkering mind, yeah, worth it. And you had lots of fun doing it. I mean, clearly this is a labor of love. There's all sorts of amazing details. We couldn't possibly cover them all here, but one of my absolute favorites, Plastic limit screws, that really is a marginal, marginal gain. How do, how do they work in practice? Yeah, so the plastic limit screws are nylon. Um, they're very soft, so you almost <laughs> need to not uh, require them. Okay. That's it. So another obvious highlight of the build, that seat mast. You've removed the rails from the, from the saddle and glued the saddle straight on. How's that been for your racing season? Yeah, uh, not very reliable, but very lightweight. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it came off at the finish line. Uh, if it had come off at the start line, the bike would have been lighter yet. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've done this as a, as a labor of love, as you say. Um, I just like tinkering. And if, you, if you're going for lightweight, you're always going to give up reliability. So you, you, never, get, you never get everything that you want, you know. But it only has to last three miles on a hill today. That's the thing. Fantastic, I love it so much. Now when we posted the article about this bike on Bike Radar, a few of you said, why is it painted? Surely a raw bike is lighter. Well, Jason told me this bike has been painted every year with spray paint at the cost of only four grams. And the question I want answered is what color will it be next season? Uh, it's going to be red next season because the red bike's faster. Facts. If you want all the details from Jason's amazing bike, head to bikeradar.com. There's a link in the video description for that. Jason, thanks so much for taking the time to chat to us. You need a jacket. Get down that hill. Thank you very much, man. <laughs>
Now this is a really, really cool looking bike, you know, but, but not super crazy in the context of uh, hill climbs. Is this your sort of day-to-day -day bike as well? Yeah, this is my posh summer bike. Comes out when it is pristinely dry. Uh, unless you're on the side of a hill in the Lake District when it's eight degrees wet and grim. How did you get on in today's event? Uh, great, yeah, I think uh, close to my time last year. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. I mean, it doesn't matter, does it really? It's just so good seeing the crowd at the finish and then just with my friend behind me chasing me like I've never dug so deep just 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 because I can know he was behind me so this is your sweet sweet summer bike day to day have you made any sweet sweet mods for the hill climb so uh, just the usual stuff really I've taken the front derailleur off and the brace on taken the wire out from inside the frame and then put a narrow wire chain ring on it shorten the chain as well to make it lighter and then use little o-rings for the light mounts as well, taking the bar tape off, obviously. Nothing super special, but you know, enough for the mindset. You're like, <laughs> I'm now hill climbing. <laughs> this is in hill climb mode. Now, of course, everyone's desperate to know you've done those sweet mods. What does this bad boy weigh? 6.68. Pretty good, pretty good for like an aero road bike and I dare say quite a practical bike, unlike some of the bikes we've filmed today. <laughs> As ever, what an incredible day this has been. Amazing tech, fantastic racing, and a huge thanks to the organizers for putting on a great event. Hill climbs are really, really close to the heart of Bike Radar. We love attending them, we love the tech, and we sort of love racing them. If you'd like to get a taste for our previous exploits in hill climbs, check out Hill Climb Diaries. We've got a link to the playlist in the video description. And of course, how could I sign off a video without reminding you to like, subscribe, and click the little bell icon so every time we upload a video like this, you'll get a notification. And if you want to see even more tech like this, check out this video.